What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 7 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Karl Franz campaign. So as we saw last time, we have taken Fort Berg Bray and now thus control both of the entrances into Bretonia that we will probably be holding off against the vampires for quite the while yet, or uh, Kemmler's Barrow Legion to be specific. And that said, they haven't attacked us since the first time with a f fairly large stack, so we are probably going to be auto-resolving a fair few of their future attacks, unless they come in with at least two stacks, because let's face it, one and a half and basically basically with zombies and skeletons, doesn't really have a chance on taking Helmgart or Fort Berg Bray with the amount of uh, garrisons that they currently have. Anyway, we left off last episode in a siege of Gorsell in our quest to destroy Marienburg for good. It's looking fairly decently so far, and I think if we're able to win this battle and the uh, massive stack of uh, halberdiers and crossbows that we're likely to face between both these armies, we should be able to break the faction and and move to our now relatively uncontested. Which would be fairly nice. Uh, Carl has a point, but obviously we are not applying that. There's no need. And is there anything else to do? Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But uh, we're going to head in and fight this right now. Here we go. Alrighty, so just quickly, what are we facing off against? They do have a mortar, and they do have great swords as well, so at least some threatening units. The first army isn't all that crazy threatening, though, and though there are a decent number of crossbows. Looks like lots of work for our Reichsguard and potentially for our uh, Free Company Militia as well. Also, we are one turn away from being able to recruit our Imperial Foot Reichsguard, which should be pretty fun. Uh, let's see if we can try them out this episode, but for now, uh, let's take out Marienburg. This is my command! They should bend the knee, not us! I have something of a guess as to what that command is, and it is to destroy this army. Should be a pretty uh, advantageous battle for our side, I would think. We have a fairly good position on top of this hill. While not completely on top of this hill, we still have a little bit of an elevation. Uh, on top of that, the two enemy armies, being the garrison and the uh, army that was here, are sort of separated by this little lake thing, which might work out fairly well for us. It'll make it difficult for these guys to retreat, and they're penned up here where the mortars could fire on them. On top of all that, we are able to spread out fairly well and surround them, and it's going to take their second army time to get here, while our, Reichs our Reichsguard, rather, move around to get to those mortars and then tie up the enemy range. Carl's just running up a little bit. I don't actually have any intent to have him engage anybody. I was just thinking if this army started to try to run away, Carl would engage a few of them to force them to stand there while the rest of our army Army moved in. Fortunately, our army does appear to have gotten the uh, range on the enemy fairly quickly, and they are going to try to countercharge us, which probably ain't going to work out so well. They are way too heavy on halberdiers, unfortunately, which means they are going to lose a lot of units running up due to crossbow and handgunner fire. Very vulnerable to range units, after all. Carl is also going to run around and hit the enemy back line to get those crossbowmen to start up firing and we're gonna try to do the same thing with our wizard and our free company militia as well and just as it's fairly unlikely that anybody but the enemy crossbows do a lot of damage to this particular army especially the halberdiers and there we go. Looks like Carl's tied up one or possibly even two of the enemy units of crossbows. The enemy have also not reached our line as yet and are spreading out a little bit weirdly to try to stop our own halberdiers from getting anywhere. But drawing out a line like this one under fire by uh, hand guns and crossbows seems like uh, not the brightest idea in the world. So these guys should be done for shortly. Of course, we also have our uh, free company militia running by as sort of like a drive-by. 
and they're shooting just on the way to the enemy crossbows. Speaking of the enemy crossbows, our halberdiers as well as our wizard are nearly there, and three out of the four of them are unable to fire. We also have our other free company militia not even bothering with them as yet, and just firing into the backs of these halberdiers while they're fighting our swordsmen. Our great swords are moving in to hit those guys in the back, but it looks like the first of the enemy armies is already in horrible shape. We also have the Sons of Sigmar, which I forgot to take a look at. A lovely unit. Especially because they're unbreakable. I assume they're still unbreakable in SFO. Yes, yeah, they are. So at the end of the day, as long as we have the Sons of Sigmar, our battle is not over. I like their color scheme as well. It's quite nice. Anyway, they are going to chase off the enemy swords that dare to charge them, as well as move forward as the enemy reinforcements are moving in. Our Reichsguard are also moving around in the background. We'll be able to silence those enemy mortars, hopefully relatively quick. Our free companies have also now tied up the other units of enemy crossbows, and it looks like the enemy no longer has any ranged units firing whatsoever. We are taking a tiny bit of uh, damage from the enemy mortar here, who appears to be firing on our free companies, but it doesn't seem like it's all that crazy as yet. We do still, however, have great swords to deal with and a fairly large melee formation. There's a lightning bolt coming down in the enemy piles of crossbows here, which is going to be a herald to fire from the sky as the mortars are going to be switching targets to all these range units. Reichsguard charging in in the background and hitting the enemy mortars who are now silenced. And while the Reichsguard will take a little bit of damage from the uh, from the enemy crossbows for their trouble, it's probably not going to be near sufficient to bring any of them down. A breath coming down on the enemy as well and bouncing off from the uh, river, knocking a lot of the, or the lake rather, uh, knocking a lot of the enemy units down, but I'm not sure it did any crazy amount of damage to them. It actually seems to have halved those units HP, which actually really isn't too bad. What's your damage up here? And it's 14k, yeah, so 26 kills only, so the model kill isn't huge, uh, but at least the damage was certainly there. Enemy Lord has also been seen off by our handgunners firing on him, and now Carl is going to chase him down to hopefully kill him off for good. Couple more hits should make it... There you go. I think he lost an arm, so he's probably not getting up from that one. And beautiful. And here comes the mortar as well as more lightning coming down into this pile of enemies. Our Sigmar sons are holding them off and the enemies are also going to continue taking shots to the sides from our free company. And we also have our handgunners moving up as well. Battle is very much uh, going in our favor and a little bit quicker than usual. Almost, uh, let's see, three and a half minutes. This is about standard, a little bit longer as uh, standard length compared to vanilla. So certainly a quick battle so far, where SFO is concerned. Enemy greatswords, however, are doing some decent damage to our halberdiers, who will die eventually, so we do have to back them up, and thus here come additional swordsmen, allowing these guys to basically retreat through our own line. We also have our great swords moving in. It's going to be some great sword on great sword action here. It'd be nice for the great swords to have a. Uh, and have a little bit of a spotlight for now, as I fear uh, that that spotlight will be going to the Imperial Footreich's Guard as soon as we have them. Alrighty, balance of power about 85% in our favor, and I do imagine this battle will be done shortly. There's a last holdout here of enemy troops. This flank completely collapsed, and all these units ran away at the same time after having taken so many hits from the mortars and fire to the sides from those three company militia. And these guys haven't been taking nearly as much f side fire or mortar fire, and thus are still up and running. We are also charging further units away to try to tie up the enemy crossbow and the Reichsguard are helping out now that they are uh, no longer busy with the enemy mortar. Just gotta chase down a few units to make sure that they don't come back. Our own mortar is also gonna help out with this, and these enemy range units will probably not get any further fire out. Carl is being held up a little bit by the enemy halberdiers, but his horse is hopping around, he is not having too much trouble, and he is helping out by pressing the enemy, essentially, or crushing them between him and these uh, Sigmar sons here. And with that, it does look like it is sufficient, and the battle is ours. We're going to end it as quickly as possible here. Obviously, we don't need to chase since this is a uh, uh, since this is a territory capture. But as well, I'm always now terrified of our own units doing way more damage to our own units than the enemy as well. 
Maybe not more, but uh, it's very possible that we do quite a bit between the handgunners and the mortars, all of which are quite dangerous to your own. Anyway, a close victory, but I don't imagine we actually suffered all that many losses. It does look like we overran the enemy quite adeptly here, and more importantly, we're able to tie up all of their range and prevent them from really accomplishing anything. Alrighty, not too bad at all. 187 losses, very respectable. Didn't get any value out of our reinforcements, unfortunately, but it's good to know and that we didn't even need them. We're not going to return this to the Elector because we are going to be holding on to the Wasteland ourselves, mostly because it is a cash cow territory and we're going to build it up to be such. And on top of that, there was a comment reminding me that I forgot to assign the Elector of the... Uh, uh, the Elector of the Wasteland here, which is definitely something we will want to do, possibly right now, unless there's a reason not to... Ooh. Also, before I forget, we need to set you to construction cost reduction. Cancel the Burgomeisters. We're about to upgrade to Tier 3 at Altdorf, which means access to Reichsfort and a Gunsmith, ideally, because we want more mortars. One is just not enough, and eventually Hellstorms and all that other good stuff. Now, in terms of what we want to do with assigning our... Electric can oh, I actually should have done that before the fight now that I think about it. Oh, it's okay. It's not gonna make that much of a difference uh, I guess we could assign this noble to it. The thing is we're gonna send him out to Middenstag So he won't be able to benefit the place for a while And but honestly, it's not like these places generate all that much cash right now anyway, so yeah I think because he's a noble which gives him control and income from buildings increase we just combine that with Elector count of uh, uh, of the Wasteland, which gives us key to the Stadstrad, which gives us the same sort of things. Control and income from buildings as well as income from ports. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. You are going to be the Electric Count of that. And the reason I wanted to, or I was saying that we probably could have done that before the battle, or should have, is because it does give us extra experience gain and magic item drop chance. But it's okay, we'll have it for the next battle. Uh, now, you're going to hit that Middenstag and then hopefully give it back to Middenland, but then we'll get you back to Altdorf to increase the... Uh, and the money and stuff that we get. We could also give up on this, but I feel like a free fealty is a free fealty. Even if it costs us a few more turns of uh, of construction and money. Really? It's not a big deal. Now, Carl, you will have access to the Imperial Foot Reichsguard next turn, as well as the Bordermen. And the only problem Super with that is, A, they're expensive, so we'd have to essentially choose between them and building buildings at Altdorf, considering the amount of cash we make. And which is not as great. Hmm. Also, before I forget, let's just double check diplomacy yes. here. Hey, Talzin's a minus 2.6. That's not so bad either. Uh, in fact, wait, is Talzin fighting with anybody? Also, wait, Marienburg 32.9? Nah, no, okay, I was thinking maybe we could force them to confederate for their last territory, but no, dice. Uh, let us see. Don't go to quick... Actually, yeah, Talzin, you're at war with Skaven, with the Scryer Skaven. All right, we can join the war. And that will indeed give us enough for non-aggression pact. I'd really prefer to do that. It's pretty much inevitable that we'll be fighting the Skaven anyway. It's not like they're going to like us. And I'd really rather get the relationships a little bit more positive with the Wood Elves. Man, they really don't like our treaties with Carrick Norn, but hopefully that'll disappear once Carrick Norn dies. And they will die eventually. Uh, also, we have a treaty with Durthu. We just need to keep his relationship reasonably positive so he doesn't cancel it. Would be annoying to have joined wars and stuff only for him to, uh, to cancel all that. Time. Basically, we need him to keep fighting with other factions so he doesn't think of fighting with us. And now, in terms of what else we gotta do this turn, I suppose we could transfer some units to Wolfram Custerman here. Uh, specifically, we could transfer one of these Empire Archers away, or the only Empire Archer away. And maybe one of the Free Company Militia. Because I'm thinking, sooner or later, we'll be getting the Bordermen and the Imperial Foot in this army. And the Bordermen are sort of similar to the Free Company Militia. 
and what they do, and while the Imperial Foot have nothing to do with the Empire Archers, they're just inferior to crossbows at this point. And while we're keeping the Death Jacks because they're a better unit, and do apply to Scourge, that doesn't mean the regular ones. So yeah, a decision made. Alrighty, so you can replace your weakest free company militia, which is going to be you, as well as your Empire Archers. Lovely. And then, Carl, you're going to march on R now, and then build these up whenever needed. We can actually build the Portermen right now, but I'd rather save the money for next turn. Especially since this would actually cost us an extra 200 money or so over the end turn. Which isn't necessary right now. Uh, Gisaro, Gap, and Bite Pass. Before I forget, or Axe Bite Pass. Uh, before I forget, do we need to switch these things? And yes, we probably do. Don't care about the casualty or punishment rate, or frankly the upkeep all that much. Let's switch you to state troop levy right now for the campaign movement range and the upkeep reduction globally. And Helmgart, Where next? you're already in state troop levy. All right, and Helmgart will be in state troop levy. All right, both of you will be like that. And then later on, once we have a full stack there, we can switch them back to host fest tag and the upkeep reduction. Not that the armies here are going to be all that expensive, mind you. Hmm. We'll see if it's actually worth it later on. It depends on if we keep full stacks here or if we end up moving outward into Bretonia or not. It really does depend on whether Lewin decides to declare war on us, considering he hates us for the fact that we got attacked, which is quite rude. I want to have our loreful ally, but if the game doesn't let us, the game doesn't let us. Cross at level 11, which is not quite there yet, but uh, one more. Wait, is it level 12? It's level 12, right? Bring me to my yeah, one more. We should get it at R now. And Celestial Wizard, Theon, you... You can have magical reserves. We're really running low on mana, aren't we? Maybe we'll try to move towards R now while in... I was about to say channeling stance, but we should probably encamp, because channeling won't offer us the ability to heal up more. Maybe we'll travel back towards this area with channeling. Unfortunate not to have the ability to cast, but oh well. Uh, Garrison Lord not moved, we don't care about any of that. I do want to double check if we got any new nice lords. That is another noble. Uh, that actually might be worth hiring at some point. And there's a defender of men as well, which I also like. And this knight heritage guy. Yeah, I remember vaguely taking a look at this last time. Uh, we may also want to spend a little bit of prestige before we end the turn as well. In fact, unless I'm mistaken, Tala Beckland, you're a nine. You know what? Let's spend let's spend it. Let's spend it. Let's go for ten. We'll get another Imperial Authority out of it. Especially as we're probably gonna lose some Imperial Authority as more Empire provinces get destroyed near Vlad, so yeah. I think this will be worth it. The uh the expenditure. Alright, now we're at ten. Now let's take a quick look at the others. I wish there was an easy way to see what exactly all their fealties yes. were. Seven, right. so you're at ten. What's Gelt at? The Eight. Empire. Not so bad, either. You're not great, Lightdorf, uh, Sterling... The Empire. Yes. What? Mm. All right. So... Actually, Ostland isn't bad, either, but Ostland is probably also going to get destroyed. So that's obviously a concern. Well, I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see at some point. Now, what else do we gotta do here? I don't believe there's anything unless there's more Imperial machinations that we want to get into, or unless we want to get one of these Imperial adjutants. I do like the... Uh, uh, well, I actually like all of these. Summon great swords. This is quite expensive, but summon handgunners is reasonably cheap. Enabled if hit points greater than 25%. Melee leadership versus straight up missile upgrades. That seems better. I'm inclined to say that the missile upgrades are better. And what do we have in terms of heroes adjutants? Uh, field doctor, control, growth, and corruption reduction. Huh, we could put this on our noble guy. Coordinated charge gives us an augment. Affects unit if is a lord or hero. Oh. Hmm, so just a straight up buff to the hero. So it essentially makes the lord just... Uh, and give them better stuff. Yeah, fair enough. Alright, for now, I think we're gonna go with the handgunners. I think. We're gonna do both, but we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get more prestige first, so dispatch. And do we get it immediately? I take it we get it immediately. Oh, and we can get an infinite number of these, so basically we can put all four of them on every single lord. Huh. 
That's actually pretty nice. All right. She seems kind of powerful. Uh, you can immediately get this guy. You are a patrol guard, patrol captain handgunner. And we also want to transfer this razor standard. So you do not need... I eh, should probably keep the scribe. I think the scarecrow banner. Well, you know what? Recruitment cost also. We can have somebody... We can have recruiter recruit for you. So, a razor standard for you. And we should probably swap the other thing out to recruiter. Uh, grave robber doesn't help us here. I just want to double check that there's nothing else that we want to transfer over. And it doesn't look like it. And what about our magic items? We still have that iron curse icon. But we don't really have anybody to give it to. Alright, recruiter. You can have the militiaman. And we can cancel these archers and replace them. Also, if it's not likely that we're going to get attacked here, we can have That's Recruiter move here to Aleheart and actually summon some crossbows instead. Sir. On the other hand, if we Huntsman replace General. this with the Defender of Men... Hmm. And the Huntsman General. A reload time reduction under siege and ammunition, plus they buff archers. But the thing is that arch lectors are way stronger. That's kind of the thing. And we could try it with both. We'll see. But nonetheless, I think we want you to get crossbows. On the other hand, Huntsman General. the crossbows are going to be expensive and we need money right now. You know what? No, just keep keep it with the archers for now. You can hold with this for at least Huntsman a little General. while, especially once this upgrades to tier two. Okay. Uh, a little bit indecisive there, but that's fine. And the turn. Here we go. Uh, let's see about that free Imperial authority. Also, Black Pit, is it in fact being sieged by Kazarak? We wanted to figure that out last episode, because if it is, this might be a concern. Yes, it is, okay. And this is kind of a concern, because Carl... Hmm. So we have two options. We can either move up to Arnau and take the faction out for good, or we could try to bait Kazarak into an ambush by uh, baiting him with Wolfram Kusterman. Alright, this is the Imperial Authority thing that we were getting the extra uh, the extra points from Talabekland from. We don't really want to confederate Talabekland. There's really no need to. I would love to confederate Balthazar Gelt, however, even at the cost of Imperial Authority. So if Balthazar Gelt comes up, maybe we'll take his confed. Especially as he owns another fort and, uh, well, he's another legendary lord. Anyway, I'm going to give this a quick read because I think these might be different for every single uh, territory, but we'll find out when we get the next one. Great strides have been made in your relationship with the state of Talabekland of late. Their elector count, Helmut Feuerbach, I can't pronounce that, has approached you with an offer of confederation. Landlocked by other imperial states, the home of the Talabeklanders is vast, with a resource-rich great forest being its most prominent area. However, its capital, Talabium, is home to the Knights of the Blazing Sun, fearsome Templars who worship Myrmidia, the classical goddess of war. Will you accept Talabeklan's offer of confederation? I don't see why they have a however here. You don't need the however at all. Is this In no way is this a however to the forest thing. Is it, is it, is it saying that because it's a forest that it expects you, that you should expect it to be more like Sterland or something? With a lot more like Huntsmen and stuff? But it's like, no, it's actually the Knights of the Blazing Sun who worship Myrmidia rather than Tall. Well, either way. We're going to allow them to assert independence. We'll see whether we have enough Imperial Authority to accept this in 20 turns. But they're doing pretty well right now. And I'd allow them to continue doing so. Assert independence. And there you go. And now we're at three Imperial Authority. So we'd go back down to zero if we were to confederate Gelt. But I do think it'll be very much worth our time to try to do so. Alrighty, care about... Ooh, free money. Yes, we just needed that money too. Beautiful. Now, time? Carl. You can, in fact, summon your Borderman and your Imperial Foot, but it'll cost most of our the cash. And, okay, wait, leave this territory. I think we should head out to R now. There's a decent likelihood Kazrak comes here. Praise we'll keep you at Gorsell. And, oh, Gorsell has a, uh, has a rally field. Huh. So we could recruit with you if you wanted to. You're not always going to be following Carl around. You're actually going to be a lord yourself. Hmm. Well, we'll see about that. Carl, move into encamp stance, and... Well, I guess we'll have to go as far as we can. You know what, we're gonna spend the money. Not so much because I think we need these guys, but because I want to... Uh... Hmm, wait. Actually, I have another idea. Move up here. Make haste, men. And this guy's recruiting. 
The question is, will we need these guys to fight this? Maybe. It really depends on how many units he can recruit in a single turn. If three, we could probably handle it without too much trouble, without needing help. Even with two units less than we currently have. And the reason I'm thinking this is because we could save about 500 gold per turn and simply upgrade them next turn. You know what? I think we'll go with that. We'll go next turn. Carl, you are going to move out. You'll heal up less, but I think it'll be well enough when we reach the enemy. We'll take these guys out, and then we'll loop back around towards the Black Pit. Hopefully Todd can hold Weissman for now. Um, Bernhardt, we're going to go send you to Middenstag. And Middenstag will be traded to the Elector here for additional fealty immediately. I'd love to do the same in the Middenheim as well. You cannot go into ambush, but you could move towards it. Does this generate a garrison? Yes, indeed it does. At a full HP as well. So stand right outside it. Like so... Ooh. Kazrak can move pretty far. Hmm, I wonder if he could reach us here. Let's hope not. Let's go here. And I'd love to trade Middenheim. Alright, next up. Altdorf. Big question for you. Uh, do we... wait, does Recruiter recruit only, or does he reduce cost of upgrading buildings? He is a constructor, so we should send him there. Alright, fine. Alright, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna send you out. We're going to recruit temporarily, possibly, this Defender of Men guy. Because anybody who attacks this is going to be sieging, so it's basically free buffs to any ranged units there. Kind of costly, but what can you do? You're gonna go there, you're gonna get these units and take them, and then you are going to move to, at the very least, Daleheart. Constructor is province, not local region, right? Local province, okay, good. I was a little bit worried for a sec. Then, you are going to immediately get Experienced Hunter, which will upgrade your archers, and Circle of Protection, which will upgrade your spearmen. I assume that pikemen count as spears. Weapon strength 25520. Weapon strength 25528. Yes, indeed, it does count pikemen as well. Beautiful. Huntsman All right. And uh, pikemen are cheaper than spears, are they not? They should be. Actually, no, they're identical in terms of cost. Well, then why would we ever build them? And yes, I know that they hit harder, but the shields are worth quite a lot. 59 only for these guys. Honestly, forts should reduce upkeep just, like, by three or something. Something pretty severe. On the other hand, from a logical... Hmm. No, maybe they shouldn't. Because you'd have to have a pretty long supply going straight to these forts every time, and then forts obviously aren't self-sustaining, so yeah, fair enough. Uh, hold the line, survival expert, and inspiring presence. All right. It'll be your job to hold, hold Fort Bray while Gregor here holds this recruiter. You are not here to recruit, but here to upgrade stuff. So, the Imperial Harbor at Altdorf is a pretty important upgrade, doubling the amount of money that it generates, as well as giving us additional defensive supply and growth. How much would a Reichsfort cost? Oh, wow. <laughs> 7,000. Hey, we can build the starting point of the Altdorf Colleges of Magic. Conclave of Battle Wizards. Oh, the Colleges of Magic are the higher tier, yeah, sure. Ah, the Altdorf Company of Honor, we also gotta put that in uh, Carl's army at some point, when we get the Imperial Palace up and running. Damn, so here is one unfortunate thing, we have to essentially make a choice. Do we build the Gunsmith and get earlier access to Mortars, or do we go straight to Reichsfort? I really wanted more Reichsguard, though. And Carl does reduce their upkeep. And it's not like we're not going to build Reichsguard, and 10 armor for Reichsguard is quite nice. Upkeep reduction for them as well, and recruitment cost. Yeah, fine. I know it's a crazy investment, but fine. We'll build more stuff next turn. And we'll probably summon, at the very least, these Reichsguard next turn as well. Next up, Diplomacy. Because we're about to end the turn, I guess. Kirk Norn, we don't care about you, oh, cool. we don't care about any of this, or this, or this, or that. So I guess we're ending the turn and then destroying these guys. You stay here. I would be tempted to recruit some cheap archers if we had money, but we don't. 
Honestly, though, if Kazrak comes down here, if he's near enough, we'll just send Carl back to kill him. And that'll be it. As in, that'll be it for Kazrak's faction. Though we don't even know the degree to which he's still alive. Anyway, let's see. Skip the rest of this. Sun assigned skill points, waiting for Carl to get those levels. Recruiter, you can actually have Root Marcher. You already have Root Marcher. All right, then start moving towards... See, logistician. Honestly, none of this helps you in recruitment, but Headhunter does. So I guess we can go through Quartermaster. Yeah, fine. Fine. And then out of this, I guess you can have. Let's go Iron Disciplinarian. A little bit of extra control. What does our control give us, incidentally? You give us. At level green, a missile strength, chaos undivided, corruption reduction, unit experience for faction wide. Oh, nice. And campaign line of sight, as well as obviously income for buildings. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. And we have a pretty great amount of uh, healing in this particular territory. Oh, wow. The tier three of the farms give us recruitment cost reduction further of, for missile troops. So with three farms and the recruiter and the control, All right, or wasn't control. There, there's a bunch of things that we can combine to make them really, really cheap, which is great. Uh, let's end the turn. <laughs> I don't think I'm forgetting anything, but if I am, it's probably not all that important. Finally, time to take out these guys. They did declare war on us, so I don't even feel bad. Where is Kazrag going, though? That's going to be the main decision, because if he comes down... No, oh, don't see him. Oh, no. And they have ended their non-aggression pact. Ooh. Good chance that means they're going to declare war on us in 10 turns then. Actually, probably less, because the AI doesn't actually care about the uh, the turn reduction thing. Hmm. Well, whatever. And what do we have here? Stop Ostermark by force, rally political support. Oh, they try to, uh, to secede. Cute. But we do have enough prestige, though not nearly as much as we'd like. Gotta be careful with that. Elector Count Wolfram Hetwig has brazenly announced the secession of Ostermark from the Empire, declaring the state's total independence. You can oppose Ostermark's independence with military action and declare war, or alternatively, use your political power to gather support and stop their secession without bloodshed. Ah, eh, rally political support. We're obviously not going to declare war on them. Alright, faction destroyed rebel lords of Nanyang. I don't see why we'd care, other than the potential caravans they might be sending our way. And... Huh. Wait. Did these guys just lose their main force? I think they did. Oh my. Well, that ain't great for them. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Alright, so I think we what we need to do... This means that Kazrak is here. What we need to do is trade Middenheim back to the Elector and then unsummon you for a turn. That's how we do this. Right here. Then we return to Elector. Imperial Authority plus one as well. Fealty plus... Oh, wow, very nice. Wow, okay, so let's just hope Kazarak destroys that again. Free Imperial Authority. Alright, allow him to hold that. He's not going to be able to hold that. Kazrak will destroy it next turn. Then, so that you don't get ambushed and killed by Kazrak, we will unsummon you. And then we'll send you back. And let's also get your Root Marcher. I actually should have gotten your Root Marcher before, but uh, that's fine. And we will delete you, and then you'll be back in five turns to power up our territories. Beautiful. You are doing good work as this uh, as this elector. Now, Carl, are you actually able to summon these guys anywhere? Nah, uh, we can't afford the Imperial Foot. Do we have to physically fight this? I mean, it is a decent amount of enemies. Hmm. I'm kind of disinclined to spend that amount of cash on just the border. Oh, and we're very, very close to being able to uh, get the Imperial Foot. I just want to try them out this episode. And the alternative would be to upgrade a bunch of stuff here. We should also delete one of these as somebody uh, as somebody suggested. Is there any way to get a little bit of cash? Lord and just a bit... Glade. Ooh, Laura Lauren, hello. The deep wood protects its 119, will that be enough? Tread carefully. We have an accord. We, yeah, yeah, we have an accord, and Nordland, yada yada yada, nobody else. 
2500. <laughs> this is completely not needed, but I want to try them out. We'll try that Borderman out next time, but uh, the Imperial Foot belong with Carl. So, this will be their debut battle, and this will also level up Carl to level 12. Here we go. Finally, some Foot Reichsguard. And we'll give them the Razor Standard straight up, because they should be inferior to the great weapons in terms of de straight up damage. But they'll have greater staying power, and which will uh, then be. Uh, well, the staying power won't be increased, but they'll have greater damage by the Razor Standard. I bet we can't hold multiple Razor Standards. There's just lots of six Razor Standards in the army. Very, very nice. Alright, our final army is going to have at least three. Imperial foot and then at least four regular Reichsguard. Somebody also asked for some halberdiers. Maybe we'll have two of those. Uh, some great swords, a couple hellstorms, something along those lines. And maybe a few, maybe just a couple ranged units. And just some. Other armies will be so heavily ranged focused that I don't want to do that with Carl. Anyway, here we go. The last battle for this faction and the debut battle for the Imperial foot. It's getting there, Carl. It's getting there. You keep saying it, and we'll make it happen. Anyway, here we go. The debut battle for our Imperial Foot Knights slash Foot Reichsguard. I've been excited to see these guys in action, and we'll see just how effective they are. Uh, speaking of, let's take a quick look at them while we move into position. They're right up front in the center, together with the uh, Sons of Sigmar there. All looking real nice with all that heavy full plate. There we go. It'll be great to get a few more of these units onto the field as our uh, as part of our main line, and then the great swords to work either between these units or on the flanks, depending on how our final army ends up looking like. It does look like, unlike the previous battle, the enemy will be getting to reinforce its second army a little bit quicker than there, as there is no lake in between them. Um, but nonetheless, they are still going to be having to travel to the battle site, so we should be able to do at least some damage to the enemy army before they arrive, and it's not like there's a crazy amount of units here. Honestly, this probably won't be a very difficult battle, and just by virtue of the fact that uh, the enemy, I think, has less units than they did last time, but I really wanted to see uh, the Foot Knights in action, so this is why we're fighting this, uh, uh, why we're fighting this cinematically. Anyway, the battle begins, the enemy is going to charge forward with its poor unshielded pikemen. Our mortar is going to start taking out their ranged units, and I do imagine the pikes will be in very bad shape long before they get to our lines. It looks like they are going to try to charge some swordsmen. Ah, no, change their mind, they're going to try to charge the Imperial foot. Okay, good luck with that. <laughs> Probably could have had a, a better chance at, uh, at charging those swordsmen instead. But you do you, Pikes. You do you. And there we go. Just like that, they are overrun and uh, destroyed. Uh, let's see. Uh, the enemy range units are also in very bad shape as we are focusing them down not only with the mortar, but with all of our crossbows as well. And they immediately are going to rout as well. Uh, they made the terrible mistake of putting all their range units essentially blobbed up together, so all of the missed shots from one unit were hitting uh, the other unit as well. Unfortunate for the AI. Not to worry though, they've got more units where that came from spreading out uh, to try to go for our flanks, but we do, in my opinion, have a far better position. Yes, they have elevation on their side, but our Reichsguard will be hitting those mortars who are now unprotected. And on top of that, all of these, uh, all these little pseudo-wall things. These little cliffs or whatever you call them. They're going to serve us really well because we can essentially blob up our units to the sides while our hand gunners fire through the middle. The enemy can't go around our flanks and we should be relatively safe there. So we can do that here and we can do that essentially here as well and then we can sort of half do it over on this side where the great swords are going to either hold the flank or go around the enemy. And of course we still have our free companies to do the same. Enemy Lord is going to charge in towards our halberdiers 
is over on this flank, and Carl is moving around to try to get around the enemy army and go after those crossbows and tie them up. It'll be probably a few minutes before we're uh, uh, we're done with the enemy mortars and ready for the Reichsguard to charge the crossbow, so it's better to tie as many of them up right now as possible. Alrighty, and the battle should be joined soon. Our halberdiers are probably not going to have a great time against the enemy lord. I do wish that I had put the uh, great swords on this side instead so that they could do it, but that's alright. We are free company militias going to charge in to block this enemy unit of swords, mostly to protect the... Uh, uh, mostly to protect our units of halberdiers, which are already in trouble, while the rest of our battle lines start moving forward as well. And here we go. This was all about the Imperial Foot Knights, and thus we're going to give a watch to how they do against enemy halberdiers here. A little bit more dangerous than what they were fighting before, and on top of that, enemy has also moved its armor-piercing greatswords to flank them. And this is a pretty perfect test for them, I think, because they're fighting two armor-piercing units and are being flanked by a great weapon unit as well, so... Yeah, and we'll check out their tanky capabilities here. And they are certainly ripping the enemy... Uh, the enemy halberdiers apart, and they are also, however, taking damage due to the flank, so we are going to pop a harmonic convergence on them. The additional armor probably isn't going to help all that much, but the additional melee defense and attack puts their stats to 1790, which is pretty insane. Certainly worth the cast in this particular situation. It also looks like the enemy greatswords are about to be destroyed here, as while they are flanking our Imperial foot, they are also being shot up in the sides from our two units of handgunners here, who have a pretty nice position on them. And there we go, and it looks like the Imperial Foot certainly held long enough to see those great weapons off. Over on this side, same exact thing is happening. The enemy is being held off by our Sigmar Sons and our Swordsmen, all the while our Halberdiers fire through the center. Gotta love these little cliffs. And they really helped out, and we can see in the background our Reichsguard coming down from the cliffs. They have seen off that enemy mortar and are now ready to charge in to the enemy range. Mortar preceding their fire, and then stopping, hopefully, and just as the enemy moves in. Our Free Company Militia has also finally gained enough ground and uh, moved around the enemy army to tie up the additional enemy ranged units, including their own unit of handgunners, which was pretty dangerous. I don't know who they were firing upon, but uh, they might have been damaging our Imperial foot further, so... Yeah, fairly decent amount of armor piercing there. Alright, what do we got in terms of HP on you guys? 76? Uh, well, your model loss isn't that high, but you did lose about half HP. Now you're ready to be doing the flanking, however, moving into the background. Or hitting these guys in the back and finally bailing out those poor halberdiers and the swordsmen that went to help them. Carl's over in the background fighting the enemy lord, but it does look like he does shatter, and with him, so does the rest of the army. Quick little battle. Where SFO is concerned, anyway, at five minutes. We're gonna take a few extra seconds as we did activate the healing potion right before the end of the battle, so Carl will heal up to full, and I'd rather allow him to do so just in case. And then as soon as that's done, we can end the fight. Lovely. A decisive victory, a nice debut for our center line Imperial Knights, and on top of that, this entire province is ours, and this faction is done. Alrighty, pretty happy with that battle. The Imperial Foot certainly got into it against the enemy halberdiers and great swords together, uh, standing strong and getting 160 kills and beating almost everybody on the field, uh, but also tanking the most by far. Uh, we also got 12k damage on them, which uh, is quite a lot as well. And for anybody who doubts the power of the uh, Free Company Militia, 117, 149, 162, and thus beating most other units. So the swordsmen, the crossbows, etc, etc, etc. Yeah, I gotta love those units. Uh, can't wait to get Sterling's revenge in this army as well. Anyway, that should be the end of this faction, and this entire territory is now ours. We will occupy our now. 
and it's gone. Beautiful. We already have a hedge wizard, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, we do, unfortunately. And only unfortunately, because uh, we'd like one. And hey, Carl's got his Pegasus now. Though it's Deathclaw that we'll be wanting ASAP. Next. Oh, hello. What did we get here? Recruitment cost reduction for all units own armies in province. Hmm. If we send the recruiter out, I guess to there instead of where he currently is, that's certainly something to consider as well. Hmm. And what do we have here? This is a clothier and it's 200 money per turn, which isn't bad. We are going to be making this into a cash cow province and thus every single territory will likely have to have uh, these tailors guilds up and running. And then anything that increases general money. So income from all buildings for province from the common temple, which is okay. Hmm. The other temples don't increase the money, do they? And it's one religious building in each settlement, not per province, so you could technically have all of them if you want. Does any of this increase our money? Well, I guess it's not super important right now, we'll, uh, we'll figure that out later. I'd love to start generating about 4,000 gold from um, from the wasteland in general as fast as we possibly can. Uh, in the meantime, we are going to switch you immediately to State Troop Levy. So that Carl has the extra campaign movement range when he starts moving next turn. Assuming that it does work immediately. Oh, Gisera was back. It was a bunch of ruins before. I wonder, did they actually return themselves via rebellion or did the, uh, uh, did the Bretonians return them? Interesting. Well, we're basically out of time here, but there's one thing I want to do before ending the episode. And that, since Carl has, uh leveled up, get the best of the Empire, Lord Recruit rank plus two and unit experience gain, then we can immediately power up, let's see, Great Swords, we can immediately power up Reichsguard, we can immediate. ooh, upkeep reduction, it's too tempting, we gotta go for upkeep reduction. One, two, and Emperor's Journey gives us weapon strength, hit points, characters faction-wide, plus the Dauntless Fury ability, which is a very nice melee attack buff and weapon strength buff as well. Increases in intensity with the time spent engaged in melee. So not per kill, just straight up time. Alrighty, and Emperor's Journey. Then we have three points remaining. Of course, we'll be getting everything here, but uh, Empire Captain's not super necessary right now. And Attrition Run Under Siege... I don't think the greatswords need all that much armor, but the extra attack on the Reichsguard is very nice. Plus the extra bonus versus large, plus the vigor loss reduction. Though I am curious, this is plus 10 for Reichsguard units. It will this apply to foot Reichsguard? So they're at 41 right now, and these guys are at also at 41. Huh. 41 and 41. Kind of interesting, considering that these guys are on horses and they have lances and their shock cavalry you'd think that they have higher melee attack but then and they compensate by the massive charge i guess but anyway for plus they're also higher veterancy and rank six well good job to the imperial foot anyway plus five plus five and it does indeed increase or upgrade them. Very, very nice. Now they attack harder than the great swords do. Can't wait to get a few more of those. I guess it's, yeah, we'll get one every single 15 turns, huh? But we also need to increase the, uh, the capacity. Wait, is that actually a thing? I don't remember. It's been too long. Here to serve. Does it just straight up upgrade one every 15 turns? Man. And it'd be a long time until we access a few of the uh, other ones, so it will be difficult to build them up. And every 15 turns seems like it's quite a long time to wait. I wonder if there's a technology or something that uh, decreases the time. Anyway, that's a nice upgrade for Carl. We will pick, I guess, another upgrade next time, as I'm going to have to call the episode here. And we will also next time be moving Carl down to the Black Pit or wherever Kazrak is and begin the hunt for the Beastmen and to return the... Uh, uh, to return Middenland to its former glory. We will also not confederate Middenland, as I don't see any need to. Let them keep doing their own thing, even though their fealty is up to max right now, unless I'm mistaken. Keep clicking the wrong system here. Yeah, their fealty is also maxed out. We are definitely going to build Boris out to be a, uh, uh, to be a lord that is going to be fighting stuff, so... With a bunch of Ulrichite, uh units as well but it won't be now i gotta i gotta prioritize guilt 
And just by virtue of him being a legendary lord, though I feel like Boris will eventually be a legendary lord himself. It would be strange for them not to, as uh, he does seem to get a lot of love. Anyway, stay tuned for the hunt for Kazrak and possibly a war against Bretonia, as they're starting to really hate us. Uh, <laughs> but if we take, but if we have to take these territories, I guess we'll be identifying the elves and start trading with them, so we won't be able to complain too much about that. Uh, as well as we will need to build an army to march towards Vlad fairly soon so that's coming as well anyway more empire to come don't forget to leave a like and comment all glory to the algorithm and thanks for watching